Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Jana Ricciardi on the line, who is a partner and practice uh, leader over at Vita Assure. Jana, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Jonna, so excited to learn more about what you're doing over at Vita Assure and how you're helping your clients. Um, but before we get into that, uh, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Jonna, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Jonna, what mission matters to you? Well, what matters to me and to the team here at Vita Assure is designing benefit plans that are relevant, sustainable, and add value to employees. And, you know, it seems kind of logical and or something that you would expect to hear from an insurance broker. But, you know, I've been in the in- industry for about 20 years now, and the workplaces have changed tremendously. I mean, new generations coming in, technology is changing the way we work, the pandemic brought in work from home, but yet the brokers are still kind of regurgitating the same recommendations. So for us, you know, having benefits evolve with the times and meet the modern day needs is just so, so important because ultimately these are the lives of employees and their family members that we're having like a huge impact on. That's great. Um, Love bringing uh, entrepreneurs and executives on the line who are helping the uh, really the business, small business owner um, community. Um, because because uh, we need your help, as you said, things are evolving now. You you mentioned you've been in the industry, you know, going on or over 20 years now. What what kind of led you to to stick with this industry? Because working with and I'll, I'll be up front, working with small business owners isn't always the easiest thing. Like like what 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 drew you to this industry and keeps you and keeps you going and motivated? It's so funny, actually. I I really love. I admire small businesses and mm. small business owners. I think that, um, I mean, we're in Canada, and Canada is, is built on small business. And I think mm. that uh, I'm always impressed by what small businesses can achieve with so little resources. They're, like, really resilient. So um, for me, it's been really it, – it's what gets me going is to work with small businesses. And they teach me things, and I help them with benefits because uh, – really that's really an important way or tool that they can use to attract and retain the best talent the talent that they deserve right and that's going to help them grow also yeah no, that's great and uh and, and great having you on because i i know like i said i took it on myself in a previous life i was uh I was a financial advisor, and I worked with a lot of a lot of small business owners, and that's why I say we. I mean, got myself as a small business owner, and I've also worked in the field, um, you know, servicing them. And I'm like, man, it's it's not an easy thing. But I like that you said, you know, the um, in your in your location in Canada, that you know, it's really built on you know small business owners in that community. And I, I just feel like the small business community, and that might be my bias, but it's just one of the best communities <laughs> out there. So um, I agree. Mm-hmm. So I want to go a little bit further into do um, what you're doing over at Vita Assure. So I, I know you mentioned benefits, but let's go a little bit further. Tell us about what you do. Yes, exactly. So when we talk about benefits, we're talking about group insurance plans. So that would include like life insurance, disability, health and dental benefits that a company would offer to their employees. That includes uh, retirement plans. Um, so helping employees build their savings so that one day when they retire, they'll, they'll have enough money. Um, you know, wellness programs, uh, benefits for expats or impatriates if you're if you have mobile workforce. So really, these are the types of benefits that we're we're focused on uh, in, in helping employers with. Mm-hmm. What do you find? So we're we're you know recording this in in January of. 2023 for context for everybody uh, for everybody listening to this and um, what 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 should business owners be thinking as they go into 2023? Well, I think that um, for me, mental health is really something that employers should be focusing on. Uh, it, it was already a key concern in the workplace before the pandemic, but COVID just really. Accepted accelerated uh, and amplified um, the issues. I think that 
um, just the, the context and, and working from home and everything that came with it just blurred the lines between work and personal. And we're seeing that uh, mental health is, is, a, is a leading cause of disability, um, absence from work, or even what we call presenteeism, which means that they might actually physically be at work, but you know their head's not in it. They're not being productive. They're not. They're not engaged. So um, you know, we right now there's so many labor shortages. It's so hard to find skilled talent or, or the talent that we're looking for. And you know, once you actually go through all the hoops to secure talent, and you train them, and you mm -hmm. onboard them, and you, and then you know, you want to make sure they're productive, and you don't you don't want them falling off. So I I think that. Uh, a lot of employers are going to have to sit down and think about what can they do to be more proactive in this space. Um, for sure, there's things they can do in terms of designing their plans, um, but I see this as being a hot topic for sure going into 2023. Mm. Where do you find um, employers are kind of missing the mark on that? Um, on, on focusing on this, like where do you find, because obviously nobody's doing it on purpose, so, so I don't mean it from that context. I just mean like right. where do you find that they're um, kind of missing the mark and where they can do better? I, I think, like you said, I think it's nobody's fault. I just think that, yeah. um, you know, there's so much, there's so much to do. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. There's so much to do when you're running a business and uh, within HR also, uh, and then you have benefits. So I think they just maybe don't are not thinking about it, or they don't have the people telling them like, "Hey, we need to sit down, uh, sit down and think about this." So I think mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like they're trying to check the box. They're trying to say, "Okay, well, I have my benefits program check. It's handled," but they're not going into detail or into more depth about what what their benefits plan is allowing them to achieve or really sometimes they only realize when it's too late like you know when that employee does go out on sick leave and and now you know what do i do to help them get reintegrated into the workforce so i think they just don't have the the, the resources or or the, the 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 support to kind of guide them through this thought process um mm and what to do next. Mm, that's great. So um, looking at, I guess, as we as we continue going through 2023, um, I, I think the, the work at home side of things has, has, uh, has take, thrown us off for a loop, like whether, okay, are we going to continue working from home? Is it going to be a hybrid or is everybody going back to work? And then as we come on, you know, the tail end of the pandemic, and, and employers are are thinking about you know what's going to work best for them. How does this? And I know this will be different for every employer, right? Size of a number of number of um, employees. Were they hybrid before? Were they? Did they already have the system set up in general? Um, are what like what's next for them? But I'm curious from your your perspective because you have a unique vantage point from the from the benefit side of things. Like how should employers be reevaluating like what this next iteration of work from home looks like when it comes to their benefits and like how it affects them. Yes, exactly. Well, it, like you mentioned, it's going to be different for everyone, but I feel that going into 2023, the employees are still, um, uh, how do you say, uh, in, in the driver's seat. Um, mm -hmm. So again, because we're, you know, we're looking for key talent still, and it's hard to find. I feel that employees are still driving a lot of that part of the, the discussion. And what seems to be coming out is that employees want to work from home. They want more flexibility. Um, so and I feel like employers will have to take that into consideration. Um, and, and make it work for their organization. The key thing to think about here is your internal processes and, and your, your how you actually deliver work and output because um, I think that it, if you are structured properly to allow hybrid or remote work, it can work really, really well. But it's all going to boil down to that, right? So if, you, if you're an organization that has structured job descriptions and job evaluations and, and processes in such a way to allow employees to be a little bit more autonomous and more responsible for their own output, it could work really well. Um, you know, businesses that are micromanaging or that tend to have, like, uh, 
a lot very procedural. I, I'm seeing them more kind of trying to get people full time. Now, obviously, that's not the case, and I don't want to, you know, there's no right or, or wrong way to do it. But I've seen a lot of success in in all, you know, whether it's hybrid or remote or working from, I've seen a lot of success, but it's all going to come back to what what is the process? What is your workflow? What does that look like? And um, employee employers can't just kind of uh, – push this under the carpet, this, this discussion, because it's it's been lingering now since the pandemic, and um, we have to make a decision. We have to, like, uh, you know, it's not a temporary thing anymore. Now it's like, okay, the pandemic's kind of over. We've got to come up with a more permanent approach to this. Mm, wonderful. Well, um, I have to say it has been great having you on the show today, Jonna, and to get your your input, expertise, and your vantage point really on what small business owners should be thinking about their, as, on their benefits and otherwise going into 2023. Um, that being said, if somebody is listening to this, and they, I know we just barely scratched the surface on on employee benefits and and really the and really what people should be thinking about, but if somebody's listen to this again and if they want to follow up and learn more um what's the best way for them to connect with you and your team yeah definitely i mean i i'd love to hear from from uh, those out there listening uh, you can reach us at vitaassure.com so vita v i t a assure a s s u r e.com we're on linkedin also um, you can either look me up, Jan or Richardi, or our page, our business page, Vita Sure. So I would say those are the best ways to reach out to us, um, and uh, we can continue the discussion. Perfect. And uh, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that our audience can just click on the links and head right on over and uh, speak into the audience. If this is your first time with Mission Matters or listening to a Mission Matters episode and engaging with the platform, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, and really what we can all learn and gain from from their lessons um, so that we can all grow together. Um, That's the point of the platform. We all want to grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or exciting to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing and Jana, really it has been a pleasure thanks again for coming on the show thank you pleasure was all mine